Hello, and uh, welcome to lecture number 35. Today we're going to be talking about barbiturate and sort of related non-barbiturate sedatives. In the next lecture we'll talk about uh, benzodiazepine sedatives in great detail. So in this fairly brief lecture we're going to talk about barbiturates and non-barbiturates. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the pharmacokinetics of these drugs. They tend to have very, very different and very varied half-lives, sorry. Uh, they can be incredibly short, uh, such as three minutes or very long, up to 48 hours. Uh, the ultra-short-acting uh, drugs are things like thiopental, um, which are often used uh, in uh, sedation procedures or anesthesia. Um, these are extremely lipid-soluble. They cross the blood-brain barrier rapidly and can induce sleep within seconds. Uh, this is part of the drug cocktail used in um, lethal injection, and uh, because those drugs are no longer uh, available for that purpose in the United States, because primarily these are made by European manufacturers, these drugs have been made unavailable. And so you may have heard a lot about the difficulty in getting drugs for those uh, procedures because thiopental was part of that uh, cocktail. Um, that was the part that was used to put the person actually to these can be very longer, longer acting, so amobarbital is one of those that's much longer acting. Um, this one happens to be more water soluble and slower to penetrate the central nervous system. And importantly, you can test for the presence of these drugs via urine analysis because in sort of a modern context, these drugs are very rarely prescribed and are more often uh, drugs of abuse. So if we take a look at sort of the varying kinds of these um, drugs. You can see they have um, quite varied half-lives depending on uh, which type of drug and varying uses. Um, you can see down at the bottom that thiopental is one of the shortest of those. Pentobarbital um, is another one that's often used in this area. Uh, phenobarbital, secobarbital we'll talk about as being one of the more dangerous drugs in this class and is actually used in assisted suicides. Let's talk about the pharmacological effects of barbiturates. These are not analgesic, that is they don't reliably produce um, sedation or sleep in the presence of pain and they do not reduce pain. In terms of sleep, they uh, tend to suppress REM sleep and suppress dreaming. And so generally during withdrawal you get excessive dreaming or what we call REM rebound because of that. There is certainly a lot of cognitive inhibition, sedation, memory impairment, significant alterations in judgment and cognitive functioning, so inability to judge risk or really oftentimes even understand what's happening around you. Uh, the barbiturate alcohol combination uh, has been implicated in a number of accidental and intentional suicides, and we'll talk about some very famous cases of accidental overdose um, in the case of uh, barbiturate alcohol combinations. In the liver, these drugs uh, simulate synthesis of metabolic enzymes, and this produces tolerance. So what happens is, uh, if you have been taking these drugs over a period of time, you require higher and higher doses. And much like we talked about with other drugs, one of the things that can happen is uh, a person might go into rehab for addiction to these drugs, come out, and then relapse and take the same dose that they used to, but because they're their liver is no longer producing those metabolic enzymes, uh, they don't have the tolerance and can accidentally overdose. So these can be potentially very dangerous drugs. So the clinical uses of these drugs um, have really declined for a number of reasons. They are very lethal in overdose, and in fact, they're intentionally given for that purpose uh, in some instances. There's a very narrow therapeutic to toxic range, so you go from beneficial to toxic very quickly, and so it's very easy to accidentally overdose on these drugs. Uh, they have a high potential for dependence and abuse. They have very dangerous interactions with other drugs, and particularly alcohol. A number of adverse reactions are associated with use of these drugs, including, of course, drowsiness and cognitive inhibitions. Uh, so people shouldn't ever drive when they use these drugs, shouldn't be making any decisions, can be associated with things like sexual assault, etc. Uh, generally, tend to be kind of equivalent to alcohol in their effects, if not just uh, more severe. Uh, importantly, there are no antidotes for overdose for these drugs. Uh, when we get to benzodiazepines, there is a drug called flumazenil that is available to reverse a benzodiazepine overdose, but there is no overdose 
um, universal drug for these uh, particular drugs. The only thing that can be done is respiratory and cardiovascular system support until those drugs are metabolized and eliminated. So basically, the only thing that can be done is to keep a person breathing, keep their heart going uh, until the drug leaves their system. And if we're talking about one of the longer acting 48 hour half-life drugs, uh, we're talking about 12 days of uh, keeping somebody uh, under observation. So it can be very, very dangerous. So there are some sort of non-barbiturates or what we call norbarbiturates. They structurally resemble these drugs with slight differences. Um, these were introduced in the 50s as anxiolytics, sedatives, and hypnotics, but are generally considered medically obsolete. Uh, they are occasionally encountered as drugs of abuse, and in particular, quaaludes is the one that most people have actually heard of. And so these are generally not used uh, in clinical practice and are more likely to be uh, discovered as a narcotic. So Miltown, uh, Soma, uh, and quaaludes are the sort of more commonly used of these. Chlorohydrate is often used as a date rate drug. It's also called a Mickey Finn. Um, so these particular drugs have uh, very little clinical use. Uh, quaaludes been used in the 70s and 80s, um, rivaled alcohol and marijuana in their popularity for abuse. Um, importantly, this has been known as a date rape drug. The dose for anterior grade amnesia is lower than that for incapacitation. And in fact, um, Bill Cosby is alleged to have used these particular drugs in the attacks that he was convicted of uh, in, the rec in recent years. Uh, more commonly used in a modern context is gamma hydroxybutyric acid, or GHB. GHB uh, is an endogenous neurotransmitter. It has a, it's a short-acting anesthetic, has a rapid onset of about 15 minutes and a very short half-life. This drug was available um, at places like GNC back in the day because it actually does promote uh, muscle development, but it also is uh, very dangerous. So overdoses are characterized by stupor, delirium, unconsciousness, coma, uh, death, and these are greatly magnified by alcohol. GHB should never be used in combination with alcohol. That is a particularly dangerous thing to do. Uh, as I said, it's popular as a recreational drug and also as a nutritional supplement. It's effectively banned in the United States except for a generic uh, Zyram version. Um, but this is a very popular recreational drug, oftentimes used in combination with methamphetamine. Um, and can be particularly dangerous for that. It's easy to overdose, uh, particularly in combination with alcohol. People will often quickly lose consciousness, and often this is called being called yeah, this is often called swirling out, um, because this is often referred to as swirl. And uh, so that kind of sudden unconsciousness can happen very quickly. This has very often been used as a date rape drug and is particularly dangerous uh, for its potential. Uh, the biggest problem with this drug is you can't detect it. It's not like you, uh, in a urinalysis, it usually just is expressed as a salt. And so this is uh, one of the more dangerous parts of this particular drug. Um, there are a number of cases that I know of where this uh, is the case. So um, be very cautious about uh, these drugs. Uh, they certainly vary rarely are used in uh, clinical practice, and there is a long sort of tragic history uh, of these particular drugs. Marilyn Monroe overdosed on chlor chloral hydrate and pentobarbital. Uh, whether accidental or not, it's never been clear. In addition, Judy Garland accidentally overdosed on uh, secondol, as did Dinah Washington. There are a number of these cases of people accidentally overdosing on these drugs. Um, we've had a similar rash, of course, recently with uh, famous people and uh, opioids and overdoses on those drugs. Uh, in the 60s and 70s, uh, these drugs were often uh, very tragically associated with overdoses. I want to talk for a moment about assisted suicide and lethal injection. Um, in a number of states, including Colorado where I live, uh, assisted suicide is um, part of the landscape. Generally, uh, secobarbital or secanol is most commonly prescribed drug for this particular, um, this particular uh, act of uh, physician-assisted suicide. The lethal dose prescribed is generally nine grams of secobarbital 
in capsules or 10 grams of pentobarbital in a liquid uh, to be consumed all at one time. Uh, this is obviously very controversial and I don't mention this um, for anyone out there to use this uh, because this is a very dangerous combination. Um, but in states where it's legal, this is one of the uses of those drugs. Similarly, we use similar drugs in lethal injection procedures. Sodium thiopental was generally used as a single drug lethal injection in the U.S. prior to the EU ban on exports to the U.S. Um, generally, it was sodium thiopental, um, oftentimes along with a paralytic drug and a uh, drug then used uh, to stop the heart. Uh, a lot of controversy over how to um, proceed with that. A number of states have started getting rid of their lethal injection um, apparatuses and also just getting rid of the death penalty in general. So these drugs are used, uh, and I point this out because I want to point out the particular danger for these drugs. Uh, and so they should not be used uh, under anything but a doctor's supervision. All right. Uh, we will wrap up with that and pick up with benzodiazepines uh, next time.